YouTube. It's the third biggest site on the internet. Everyone's heard of it. I've heard of it. You've heard of it. Your grandma's heard of it. In fact, more than 800 million people visit YouTube each month. That's a lot of people. And they're watching crazy amounts of video. Like 3 billion hours a month crazy. So what does that mean? Well, for one, it means that there's a lot of people with a lot of free time. But it also means that the way people consume media is changing. In fact, in 2011, more than 1 million Americans canceled their cable or satellite subscriptions. That's a lot of Americans that are no longer watching cable or satellite. In 2012, YouTube announced that there were thousands of people making six figures a year just by making and posting their videos online. So what is everybody watching on YouTube? And who are the people creating all of this new content? YouTube is something so different now. It's not about all the viral stuff. There are so many people on YouTube that make consistent content. For a while, it was strictly kind of a younger demographic, but now there's stuff on there for moms and for dads, and there's stuff on there for, for people that want to experience something different than what's available to them in their everyday life. Now everyone give a big round of applause for the person responsible putting this whole weekend together, Mr. District Lines himself, Kevin Gangin. To us, YouTube is the most important thing going on in media right now. It's the most important website on the internet. It's the most important company in the valley. The way that we're now watching our news and our entertainment online in greater and greater quantities, it's, it's the most important change that's ever happened to media in my lifetime since the internet was introduced to regular people like me. I don't even have cable in my living room because it's such a pain to drill and it doesn't matter. I don't I don't care. I watch Netflix on my Xbox or I, I watch YouTube on my PS3 and that's just like I feel like that's just how it's going. District Lines is an online store and shop. We print t-shirts, we sell them online. A few YouTube things caught our eye. It just kind of made sense that like this would work with t-shirts. There was a lot of traffic, there was a lot of interest, uh, but it wasn't what YouTube is now. In the interim, between where we are now and when web shows started, vlogging totally took over. It was just a person sitting in front of a camera talking. That, that's how it started, basically. It was this completely new conversation that you could never have with television. You could sort of have it with radio because you could call in and you know be on the air sometimes, but the personal connection that vlogging created has never been more real. When you accept the limitations that you've got and work with the content instead of trying to pretend that the quality is good, you can get incredible vlogs that can get millions of views every day. I'm gonna get comments, Shay, do this. Here's, here's the best diet I've ever did. My grandma did and she lost 100 pounds in a day. Green jelly and mustard. It's the diet of the stars. No, it's not. Over the long term, web shows and more content creators really started to take a hold of the market on YouTube where there was actual consistent content that people would sit down and watch as if it was something on television. And now the audience decides, is it good? Are we gonna watch this? Are we gonna share this? Are we gonna give it a thumbs up? Are we gonna subscribe, favorite, all that stuff? And that hasn't happened before really. The word of mouth factor, the audience engagement factor, those have become the most important things that's a game changer. Do you think I could pass as a lesbian? Yes. The YouTube end of our business has definitely been growing over the years. Last year we did $2 million in YouTube merch alone. Last year we did $2 million in YouTube merch alone. Playlist Live is our three-day YouTube convention slash festival slash party slash concert. We do it right here in Orlando, Florida. We bring in tons of YouTubers, bands, all sorts of cool people, people that are working in the space even if they're not necessarily making videos, and we, we stick them in a room and we have this awesome gathering festival party. It's cool. We have lots of performances, different people do speeches, they do talks, interactive stuff with the audience, Q&As. 
We have musical performances the entire weekend. We have panels where we talk all sorts of YouTube business stuff. I've never let my audience control my life and don't plan to. <laughs> well, they, they kind of do. So the best practice is you have to launch your real name and then you can launch your plus page from your real name. My, li my life is uninteresting. It's not interesting at all. I eat noodles and I go to sleep. <laughs> Anna Hart talking about herself. Take one. Uh, my name is Hannah Hart. I run a channel on YouTube called My Harto, uh, and I'm most well known for a show I do called My Drunk Kitchen. I found this on the floor. All right, you can't open this with your mouth. <sighs> well, the way I got started with My Drunk Kitchen uh, actually was not intentional. I was, I had just moved to New York from San Francisco and I was homesick and I was talking to a friend on Gchat and you know, she was saying, oh man, dude, I miss when you would like get drunk and cook in your kitchen, man. And I was like, dude, I will make you a drunk cooking video right now. And so I flipped open my photo booth, I got hammered, tried to make grilled cheese and I sent her a freaking YouTube video of me doing it. And now I run a show on the internet. It's truly bizarre. People ask me like, when did things begin to change? And it all happened at once. It was all just like this giant boom. It's like everybody started watching this video. People were following me on Twitter now. The first time I got recognized in public, um, I think I was at a bar in Baltimore. And it was really rough because it was like a college bar and there were all these frat guys, which was kind of a cool social moment, right? Like all these like giant bro-y frat guys coming up to like, me being like, oh man, I gotta buy you a drink, Harto. I love your show. Um, but yeah, I get recognized all the time now. It's like at a grocery store, I was at a flea market at 7 a.m. and a group of Canadians come up to me and they're like, we're just in town visiting LA. I can't believe I'm meeting you. I love your poutine. You know? <laughs> it's really interesting that I have all these people who wanna like date, marry, or sleep with me. Um, I've never been like the hot kid, you know, it's never been like, oh, that Hannah Hart, Oof. can't wait to fuck her, you know? <laughs> um, like, I want to talk to all my fans all the time, you know? It's like why I'm so happy when people bump into me on the street. I'm just like, give me a hug. I, in a weird way, I think I'm a little more excited to meet them than they are to meet me, <laughs> you know? Well, I do get mean comments sometimes. I had somebody tell me I look like a gerbil and they want to take a shit on my neck, and I was like, Wow, that's gross. Uh, I had somebody say, um, you have a mannish and disproportionate body. You should uh, get some work done or go to a doctor or something like that. It's like every time somebody writes a hateful, flamey comment, you just know they're projecting. They're like, I hate myself. I've never written a negative comment on something. Like the most negative I can get is not watching it. I'm just like, ah, that's stupid, I don't wanna watch it. Dan, I hate myself. <laughs>